Hey everybody, it's Glenn. Back in this video as San Diego Comic Con is nigh upon us, but alas, I don't have a spare kidney I can sell so I can afford this year's exclusive Marvel Legends set on eBay, so it's time for a toy rewind back to last year's set. <laughs> Which was the Doctor Strange Book of the Fashanti, which here I'm borrowing from my good friend Craig, so thanks to him for allowing this review to happen. And if it is unfamiliar to you, allow me to fill you in. Book of the Fashanti is possessed by Doctor Strange and is the greatest source of magical knowledge. Yet as I open it up, instead of spells inside, we get some really awesome artwork of the characters in the set, along with some biographical info. And the action figures themselves are packed into a flocked plastic container, creating a more sophisticated look than expected. Some of the characters are more loosely connected to Strange than some, yet all are connected by being magic users. They are left to right Colossus's little sister and mistress of limbo magic, then brother Voodoo here in the role of Doctor Voodoo when he assumed the mantle as Sorcerer Supreme, then the interdimensional entity Dormammu, and then the Norse goddess Hela, and finally Doctor Strange himself which seems like the most logical starting point, and here he is in his astral form, no less. With Strange's powers, including him being able to project his spirit form from outside his body, the translucent plastic makes for an apt communication of that power. And essentially, it's a variant of the regularly released Strange from the Hulkbuster Bathwave, making this exclusive one a good companion piece alongside it. Me, myself, now I'm a sucker for translucent action figures to begin with, but what I really think caps this one off nicely is the deco, with silver paint highlights details from Strange's costume. Then as we take a closer look at the head sculpt, the deco there with its silver eyes and blue detail to his eyebrows and moustache help convey a greater sense of his character. It toes the line well between drawing attention to the sculpt, which in translucent plastic is less immediate to the eye, yet also doesn't over deco staying true to the ephemeral concept of this being an astral projection. Like the Strange released in the Hulkbuster wave, he comes with spell effects too. Two. They're not moulded to match the translucence of the plastic, instead they have a pearlescence to them which actually gives them a good synergy with the silver paint deco details. Got a lot to get through in this video so I won't linger on the articulation, but I have reviewed the regular Doctor Strange so if that's something you want to check out you can click this video now. But moving on. And now the Dread Dormammu, a perennial and likely the greatest of Doctor Strange's foes, first appearing in Strange Tales 126 way back in 1964. Yeah, that's him down there on the cover, chillin'. Many years later when I entered into reading comics, he looked like this, setting that as the classic look for him in my mind. But here we get an even more modern interpretation, one which gamers may also recognise as it's how he appeared in 2011's Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom video game. The basis of the figure is actually the Terax builder figure back from the return of Marvel Legends, and more recently also forming the basis of the Absorbing Man builder figure, and in fact the Sandman figure from this year's SDCC set. His former life as a bath gives good height to his already commanding presence, towering over Tiger Shark here who is on the Hyperion body, and standing taller still than the Wrecking Crew's bulldozer. But for some parts being reused it's certainly transformative, with enough additions to give him a life of his own. Taking a closer look, and when it comes to the deco of the red on the front there, I'm going to cut Hasbro some slack and say that it's intentional to look like that. But beyond that, the flow of the waist cape and the dramatic shoulder armour make the design regal. Fittingly so, he is after all the ruler of the dark dimension. And it also mixes the period flair of historical pageantry with a strain of futurism that adds to a suitably otherworldly appearance. Capped off with a head that features a wickedly grinning face and a flaming head, moulded in a translucent plastic that has some cool variation to it, so it's more orange at the front then trailing into more yellow as it goes back and upwards. Yeah, my favourite element is his hands as following the arms down. I love the transition from the metallic purple deco into the purple translucence of the hands. The effect of it leaves me to imagine his summoning some kind of dark mystical energy. 
Rumour is he may just be the builder figure in a wave of Doctor Strange legends to accompany the movie's release. If so, hopefully distinct in deco enough so collectors who coughed up for this set can cling to their exclusivity, but ultimately will be a slam dunk for those among us who never coughed up for it to begin with. Now looking at articulation and his head does rotate side to side and then he is able to look down really only a small amount and then not really able to look up. Then at the shoulder his arms do rotate although they are inhibited from a full rotation by his armour which is a separate vinyl piece. Then they move up to just about a right angle to the body. They have upper arm rotation, a single jointed elbow. Then at the wrists his hands rotate and they're also hinge moving down and up. He has waist rotation and then an ab crunch which moves this far forward and then moves this far back. At the hips his legs move out to the side this far and then they move this far forward but owing to his waist cape don't really move back. There is upper leg rotation and a double jointed knee and then he has lower leg rotation too and his feet are hinge moving backwards and forwards. Now is inhibited by the sculpt of his armour there and there is a slight ankle pivot. For accessories he comes with not one but two flaming skulls and I say he comes with them I mean he comes with them as much as anybody else in this set does come with them but he is colour coordinated to match them. Now I don't know if he's supposed to just hold them aloft in his hand. Shakespeare's Hamlet style alas poor Yorick. But they do however have sockets for neck pegs underneath them because they originally belonged to a ghost rider from that Terax bath I banged on about. Yeah his wave. But for fun let's see how they fit on action figures in this set. On magic it's a bit loose. On brother voodoo it's never gonna fit. With Hella making for the best fit, but enough of that, I'm feeling like Goldilocks over here. Correct, head back on now as it's time to look at Hella. I've heard some call her Hela, but she is in Norse mythology, the ruler over the realm of the dead, i.e. kind of the Christian equivalent to Hell, so I'm sticking with Hella. First appearing in Journey into Mystery 102 back in 1964, a time when counterculture was dabbling in LSD, and I get a sense of that with this very classic Jack Kirby design that borders on psychedelic. Now I've never really liked this body, first used for Red She-Hulk from the Hit Monkey Wave some years back, and more recently for Valkyrie and Fundra. I can't quite put my finger on my beef with it. Something just doesn't work proportionally for me, the legs too long, the arms too short maybe, but here this is the most I've liked it. I feel the deco with its vivid green pattern on the body ascending up into the wide shoulders and insane headdress distract me from the problem that stuck with me in its previous uses. Now in hell they must not have doorways or if they do they're very wide ones as if they don't wearing that headdress would get old quick. In execution the metallic green antler like shapes translate into plastic from the two dimensional comic page way better than I thought they would. Behind the headdress the whites of the eyes surrounded by shadowy black adds a foreboding element and of course green lipstick cause in this outfit she's already too committed to the colour to go back now. Her cloak is frankly disappointing. I know throwing a tatty bit of fabric on a $20 action figure makes some act like they've just bought a $200 Hot Toys, but in the comics the cloak is important as it's magical and a great source of power for her. It's what keeps her young and beautiful, yet in Hasbro's hands it looks like what your nearsighted dear old grandma would make for your action figure in the spare five minutes she's got between her afternoon nap and popping out to play bingo. Now looking at her articulation and the head rotates side to side, she is able to look down a fair amount but then isn't able to look up very much at all. At the shoulder her arms rotate, inhibited by her grandiose cloak shoulder armour thing there and then they move up this much. There's upper arm rotation followed by essentially a single jointed elbow rotation at the wrists and then the hands are hinge moving down and up. No waist rotation but in lieu of that she has a rotating diaphragm joint under her um, boobies and then this also crunches forwards and backwards. At the hips her legs move out to the side this much then to move them forward you need to finagle the uppermost part of her leg and then utilise the leg rotation to move them forward and then they don't really move back. She has a double jointed knee and then at the ankles her feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards and she also has that crazy ankle rocker pivot that I love with this being her widest stance possible still with both feet flat on the floor. Here is her accessory, it's her knight sword and while she does look 
pretty menacing holding it. I really wish this wasn't molded in this almost glowing the dark neon green as it just takes away a sense of menace from it. I wish instead they'd have molded it from the more metallic-like plastic of her headdress. Complaints aside, I will admit that in hand I surprised myself by liking her more than I anticipated. And if the figure is one you hunger for, you may want to hold on to your horses as the character is set to be played by Kate Blanchett in 2017's Ragnarok. So I wouldn't be surprised if her MCU appearance be accompanied by some form of new action figure of her. All things considered, this set represents a good range of characters broadly selected from across the Marvel Universe, yet all united in a tight concept embodied in the packaging itself. Anyway, if me wrapping this up leaves you saying, hey Glenn, what about magic and brother voodoo? Well, I previously looked at both of those individually, so if you haven't seen them, you can click either of these videos to catch up and complete my reviews of the set. But before you do that, please be sure to take a split second to give this video a big thumbs up, and I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.